The last 12 months have been rather difficult times for landscape trees in Oklahoma. We've had just about every type of stress that the trees can go through. And it has taken its toll on a lot of trees in Oklahoma. Today we have with us Steve George. He's a plant pathologist from OSU. He's here to tell us a little bit about the different kinds of stress the trees have gone through and what we could do to get our trees through the damage that they've, been, that they've had. Jim, I, I love trees. I think anyone who uh, lives in, in Oklahoma really appreciates them. But the past 12 months, as you mentioned, have been extremely difficult. We've had a number of, of stress factors in uh, succession. Last fall, we had an early fall freeze, so many of the trees had not yet gone dormant. That damaged them. We had extremely heavy rains last fall. Then this spring, in late March, we had uh, an extremely hard freeze that damaged many of the trees. A lot of them had leafed out. Those leaves were damaged and, and uh, dropped. So those trees had to use stored food reserves to leaf out twice, and that, that will uh, weaken any woody plant. We had a dry April and May, but then in the latter part of May, we had extremely heavy rains, especially in our western part of the state. I think what happened at that time, there are some fungi that live in the soil, primarily Apithium and Phytophthora, and whenever you have wet, waterlogged soils, the zoospores of these uh, fungi can infect the roots of the trees, and I, it, this did happen in some cases. What, what, what was tricky is that the symptoms didn't appear immediately. Now, each one of these things, the flood and the heat and the dry, is not unusual to Oklahoma. That's true. I guess what you're saying is that it wasn't, each, it wasn't the individual flood or the freeze. It was just a combination one after the other. Right. And the trees never had time to recover. It's just been constantly weakened. That's right. Pecked away at it. And these these root rot fungi, there it was an almost subclinical infection, meaning it wasn't enough to kill a tree outright, but again it weakened it. So here you have a weakened plant. Some of the root system has been damaged by these fungi. Then when you get the hot, dry conditions of July, it was simply more than the plants could handle and especially pines that will not tolerate wet feet, uh, many of them across the state have died, even large pines. Many of the, the uh, deciduous plants, this stress would be expressed as, as burning along the very edge or margin of the leaf. So if you have seen burning on the uh, leaf edges and this uh, burning moves toward the center of the leaf very uniformly, almost always that will be some kind of environmental stress rather than a a disease. So it's, it's not a fungus or anything, so there's no. no spray you can put on, That's it's right. just a matter of the roots being damaged or some other environmental right. stress. And then to add insult to injury of all things, we had some high winds in the summer that broke many tree limbs, so what you have now is a jagged stub remaining that is a perfect entry point for canker organisms that, that, that can really damage a tree. It's been a tough year to be a tree in Oklahoma, hasn't That's it? true. So besides the I mean, obviously we don't have any on marginal this scorch on, this, on these trees. What other symptoms are you seeing besides dead trees or the marginal okay, scorch? The, the first symptom that the homeowner will, will see is to look in the top of their tree. Anytime you have bare branches at the, at the upper portion of the canopy, that will be your first hint that that tree is in trouble. And especially large trees take many years to reach that size. They can also be under stress for uh, several years and, and uh, the homeowner must be alert to these, to these clues that the uh, tree is giving us. So if you see dead branch tips in the upper part of the canopy, you, sh you should start to determine what's wrong with my tree. Your tree is telling you, hey, I've got, I've got problems, I need your help. Okay, what other type of symptoms besides okay, uh, the dead one, branches? One uh, symptom that the homeowner should uh, look for is any time bark has been uh, uh, loosened on, on a tree, especially on the south or our southwest side, be a sure and check for canker organisms. You can see here that we have cut the bark away and this brown, obviously a damaged tissue, has, has probably been infected by a canker organism. This lighter green tissue is the healthy portion. It's, it's what happens uh, many times on the south and southwest side, this uh, portion of the bark heats up in the winter and we get a hard freeze and it pops that bark loose leaving an open uh, area here, <clears throat> and then the canker organisms can come in that open area. One part that's interesting here is you notice the bark doesn't change that much from down here where it is healthy up to where it's dead. You need to cut into that right. bark to see where the dead 
tissue is and where the live is. Absolutely. Now, will this go ahead and, and heal over? from here or uh, is it going to get bigger and bigger? The, the application of chemicals here is, 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 is probably not the, the, uh, the method to use. Cankers hit weakened trees, so I think just invigorating the tree, getting the tree as healthy as possible, the tree can probably wall this injury off. And will it start healing over yes. it? Yes. We will recover yes. from it? Usually they will, yeah. Okay. What can we do? He's talking about invigorating the tree. Okay. What specifically are you talking about? There are, there are several things that uh, need to be done. The first thing, you, uh, the homeowner needs to remove all the dead, diseased, or broken branches in a tree because these are prime uh, feeding sites for fungi and insects that can then get into the healthy portion of the tree. So remove any dead, diseased, or broken branches. Uh, something else that would be very helpful, get this, my implement here, is to aerify or uh, punch holes in the soil to let more oxygen get to the root zone. You have a damaged root system and anything we can do to get more oxygen to the roots, the better off your, your that, plant will be. That's why the, the heavy rains were so damaging because the, water, the soil was waterlogged and air couldn't get down into the, to the roots and so this is just helping the roots by getting the air down. Right. And this is a soil probe that cuts out a core of a soil, leaving an open column. And that's much better than just taking an iron bar and punching a hole. If you just punch a hole, many times that compacts the soil at the edge of the hole. So if they have a soil probe, that's fine. A bulb, a, a, a planter can also be used, even an electric or hand drill. But make a series of holes all through the root zone, in the, in the soil. They need to be about a foot deep and about two feet apart. So in a large tree, you're going to be putting a lot of holes Lots in. of holes. You need to extend on out uh, beyond the outer ends of the branches because the roots that we're particularly interested in are out under the uh, drip line. Okay? okay? Something else that would be uh, very helpful is to, as, as you can see here, the grass is grown right up against the, the, uh, the trunk. If we could get the, the grass cleared out from this area, mulch it to keep the grass competition down, that would also allow more uh, moisture nutrients to go to the tree. A, a normal healthy tree could take this competition, but since it's weak, we need to make it right. as good conditions as possible. Especially on a smaller tree. And after you have aerified the, the uh, soil, that would be an excellent time to uh, fertilize. And you don't want your plants going into the winter either hungry or thirsty. It's very important that you water your plants, especially your evergreens, throughout the winter because they lose water all winter. So, actually, for a weakened tree, what we're talking about is uh, basically tender, loving care. Make sure it's watered, fertilized, make sure you've got good air, and do some sanitation pruning. Absolutely. Now, there's, are there any other problems, disease there, problems we can look at? There are, there are some, some leaf uh, problems. Uh, we do have some on red button. I'd like to uh, show you those if we could. Okay, yeah, let's go look. This is the uh, red bud I was telling you about. You can you can see here that that uh, there are many uh, leaf spots on the on uh, these leaves. If this leaf spot, which is probably a fungal disease, and there are, there are many different kinds that will cause a leaf spot on red bud, if it would happen early in the spring, then that would be some uh, cause for concern, and perhaps even a chemical control might be uh, needed then. But this late in the year, these leaves have done their photosynthetic duty. So the homeowners do not need to worry about a disease that hits the leaves this late in the year. I don't think our chemicals are uh, required here at all. What, what you want to remember is that these disease organisms will spend the winter in these leaves that fall to the ground. So the easy way to help reduce your uh, problems for next year would be to uh, simply, as these leaves drop, rake them, gather them, and then you can, can either have them hauled off or burned. So that way it isn't necessary to spray now, but hopefully that will reduce the uh, problems that the, uh, the tree would have next year. Have leaf spots been worse this year than, than other they, years? They really have, and, and the main reason is that we've had more, more rains, more, more uh, moisture, the, uh, the humidities have been higher. And in general, we have the spores, the, 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 the tiny reproductive bodies of fungi that, that are here all the time. They, when they land on the, the surface of a leaf, whether it be tree or turf or whatever, 
as long as that leaf surface is dry, those fungal spores cannot germinate. They can't do any damage. But if there's a thin film of moisture on that leaf, then the, the spores germinate and, and they can grow into the leaf uh, uh, tissue and cause uh, trouble. So that's why we've had so probably I've more noticed issues. this summer we've had dews through most of the summer and that's right. where we've gotten leaf moisture yes, sir. from mm -hmm. the spores. Okay. So this year, just rake up the leaves this late. Don't worry about spraying. Right. Next year, you might need spraying. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's been a lot of good information. I've enjoyed I'm it. I'm glad you could join us. Thank you.